Something really big has just happened in the world of self-driving cars and Tesla in particular. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you what that is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. On Friday, August 25th of 2023, Elon Musk went live on X, formerly known as Twitter, and he had a live stream, a very grainy, somewhat poorly recorded live stream of a Tesla driving itself around Palo Alto. This car was using Tesla's latest FSD beta software version 12. Now, what's very interesting about this self-driving system is that this is an AI based self-driving system. And with this AI based system, the Tesla car drove itself around Palo Alto very similarly to the current human written versions, meaning that whatever version that Tesla was using with its AI based system was able to do basically the same thing that any other Tesla on the road right now can do. But what's really interesting about this version that Tesla has shown this past Friday is that how the car drives itself is a really, really, really big deal. Now, the reason why this is a breakthrough is because in the past, Tesla has used human code to solve for that self-driving solution. So when a car approaches a stop sign, Tesla has some sort of code. It's a very simple way of explaining it, but it has some sort of code that says, hey, if you see a stop sign, stop. If you see a traffic light that's red, stop. If you see a right turning lane and you have to make a right, get in the right turning lane. There is a lot of steps like that that the system has to read through that a human has generated. Now it's moved from a human generating all that code to an artificial intelligence system writing that code. And the way Tesla does this is by taking video from the eight cameras around each Tesla that's driving around right now. And this video feed is sent to the AI the AI figures out how to properly make that car move around based on the video that it's ingesting. And then that code that the AI writes gets sent to the cars and then the cars use that code to drive around. And so here's an example of what that means. Very rough example, simple terms, but I hope it helps you understand this a little bit better. This is an intersection with stop signs. Here's a car approaching the stop sign. You and me as a human know that as we approach that intersection, there are stop signs on either side, which means that once I get to that white line after that car, it means I have to stop, I have to look around, and then I have to drive through that intersection. We've learned these rules by reading a book, by driving around, by just doing the usual things we as people do to practice to get better. Now, what this AI system does that Tesla is developing with version 12 is that they send a bunch of examples of video of their cars, of the Tesla cars that are on the road right now doing this stop. So they have video footage of, I don't know, 10,000 Teslas, 20,000 Teslas stopping at 100,000 stop signs. And that video gets captured. It gets sent to Tesla's headquarters. That video feed then gets put into a AI brain. And the AI brain, through repetition, kind of like our practice, learns how to approach a stop sign and stop it. And what's even crazier is that the system doesn't have to know explicitly what a stop sign is, what a lane marking is, what a car in front of it with the red brake lights is. All it knows is that anytime this car approaches this kind of scenario, it comes to a stop. And so the system makes an assumption that, hey, every time I see a stop sign, the car is coming to a stop. So I should probably do that too. And then you repeat this process over and over and over and over again for every single situation that exists on the road. And so the key thing, again, to remember here is that a human, a person, has been essentially removed from the equation of sitting down and manually coding in how to handle a stop sign, and instead an AI has figured out how to handle a stop sign. But it also has figured out how to handle roundabouts, it has figured out how to handle right turn lanes, it has figured out how to handle cars in front of it, cyclists, pedestrians, potentially debris on the road, potholes, so on and so forth. And this is truly a breakthrough. This is very different in how every single other car company, self-driving car company, has approached self-driving, including Tesla up to this point. Now, I wanna compare this solution to how everybody else is handling it just to give you an idea of what this actually means from an implementation perspective long-term and why this is such a big deal. And if you're enjoying this content so far, I would love it if you throw me a like, thanks so much. Now, here's an example of a self-driving car from GM's cruise division. This is a Chevy Bolt. 
that's outfitted with a bunch of sensors like LiDAR, ultrasonics, radar, camera, so on and so forth. Here's another example of a Waymo Pacifica from Chrysler that uses the same exact technology. LiDAR cameras, a bunch of sensors. Here's a, an example of a Baidu self-driving car over in China. This is their Apollo solution. Can you kind of see this huge thing on the roof of the car? And the way these companies are handling self-driving is that they have a bunch of sensors that the car has around it and on top of it. And then humans are writing code for all these sensors and the maps that are needed for those sensors to read what's around them to actually process the world and navigate through the different scenarios these self-driving companies go through. Now, a lot of credit has to be given to these companies because these companies have figured out how to have a car drive itself without a driver behind the steering wheel and pedal. This is called a level four self-driving solution. And for these very specific cities and places where these companies operate, it works most of the time under very specific circumstances. For example, GM's cruise division was only allowed to operate in parts of San Francisco for certain hours on certain days. Now they've been expanded to cover the entire city city of San Francisco, but it can go on highways. And of course, like any other technology, they do still have issues. Here's an unfortunate situation of a GM cruise ending up in a cement patch. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, injured or anything like that. It was just a kind of an unfortunate situation. And there have been other situations as well with these companies where they've had accidents and crashes Luckily, very, very few injuries and deaths, but they're still not perfect. This is still a great development, but it comes at a giant cost. And that giant cost is scale. And by scale, I mean being able to have these solutions available in essentially every city, on every road, in every country on planet Earth. And the reason why is because they have so many systems that are tied to those self-driving cars. They don't really use an artificial intelligence to figure out how to drive, and they also use a lot of sensors other than cameras to figure out where to go. And so for these systems to work, you need things like LiDAR, radar, ultrasonics, cameras, infrared sensors in some cases. You need maps of the entire cities that these companies operate in. You need human code to sit down and figure out how to interpret all these different sensors. You need internet connectivity to ensure that if a problem were to arise, a human can beam in and figure out how to navigate the car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what's crucially important with these systems is that every area in operation for these vehicles needs to be mapped, meaning that every turn, every traffic cone, every stop sign, every crosswalk, absolutely everything, road work, whatever you can think of, the system needs a map to reference against to be able to navigate through those areas. And any changes on the maps, like any road work or different lane changes, or maybe they change the stop sign, or maybe the stop sign's missing, a bunch of different things have to be remapped every time there is a change. Now let's go ahead and compare this to Tesla's approach so I can show you how big of a gap there is between what Tesla has just solved and how everyone else is doing it. For Tesla's system under version 12, all the system really needs is eight cameras, which is what every Tesla has around its body. It needs a computer in the car to process the data that is given to it by the AI. And it needs an AI brain of sorts to process all the data that the car sent back to the mothership in order to give instructions to the car on how to handle its surroundings. Fortunately for Tesla, they have over 4 million cars driving around the world right now, collecting said video for the AI brain to process. Now, we already talked about how Waymo, Cruise, and the other companies are limited from a scale perspective because there's so much they have to work through in order to expand their solution in addition to deal with the little changes that happen in their areas constantly. However, for Tesla, the limitations are very different from a scale perspective. What Tesla is limited by is how much video it can generate and how much compute power the AI brain has available in order to process that video. Now, if we think about the video limitations, that is limited by the number of cars on the road driving through as many situations as possible. You're gonna get a lot more video from four million cars than you would, let's say, from a thousand cars or even a million cars. You want as many cars in as many places in the world as possible. And so within that context, it probably makes a lot of sense why Tesla's growth has been happening the way it's been happening. If you look at back to 2013, the car was shipping about 22,000 cars per year. In 2022, they shipped about 1.3 million cars that year. And for 2023, they're projected to sell about 1.8 million cars. And this is tied to Tesla's goal to reach 20 million cars per year by 2030. 
and you can kind of see why they want this. They want as many cars everywhere so that they can collect that data to put into the AI brain to process every possible driving condition that a car could see itself in. And this was reiterated by Elon Musk, again, Tesla CEO, having a vast fleet of cars for FSD autopilot training is a massive Tesla advantage, essential for the hundreds of millions of unusual situations cars encounter on roads every year. And so from a video perspective, you can see how Tesla is scaling in order to cover any gaps from a data perspective. And when we're thinking on the other side of the equation, which is compute and how much horsepower the AI brain has at its disposal, compute is limited by how many chips Tesla has in order to process that data. And the interesting part here is that Tesla is already investing billions of dollars per year in order to ramp up its compute power. Here's a message from Elon Musk this morning. We're going with both Dojo, which is their in-house chip solution for their AI brain, and NVIDIA. And here's a message from Tim. Tim is part of the AI team at Tesla and X. To give a little bit of context as far as what Tesla is working on, Tesla AI 10,000 H100 clusters go live Monday, which is today. Translation, Tesla has bought a ton of chips, 10,000 chips from NVIDIA that they'll use for their AI brain. And so you can now see that Tesla from an AI perspective, they have the code that they need that solves for self-driving and all they're limited by is scale. And that scale comes from how much video they can generate from their cars and how much horsepower they have at their disposal to process that video. And this is very reminiscent to me of the Model 3 ramp. If you're not familiar with this story, Tesla unveiled the Model 3 back in 2016 that generated 115,000 orders before the car was even shown to the public and it had over half a million reservations by the time that car came out. And it has allowed Tesla to become one of the largest companies in the world. And at the time in 2016, it was thought that it was almost impossible to have a car that's affordable, profitable and also fun to drive that is an electric vehicle. And Tesla was able to achieve this by having breakthroughs in manufacturing and breakthroughs in engineering. They designed really efficient, powerful motors. They designed really powerful and energy efficient batteries. And they came up with very unique manufacturing techniques for electric vehicles that made it much more affordable to make, which allowed the prices to come down. However, even with those breakthroughs and the amount of work that had to go into creating those specific technologies, Tesla still needed scale to avoid bankruptcy. Tesla needed to figure out how to build 5,000 Model 3s per week in order to spread out the cost evenly enough through the factory so that they don't take a loss from manufacturing their cars. And that scale is what allowed them to reach profitability and what allowed them to earn enough money to build the Model Y and now the Cybertruck and also start working on their compact car. And that scale also allowed them to invest in their AI brain that they're now using for the full self-driving solution. Solution. And what's funny is that it seems like history is repeating itself. This situation is the same exact thing with Tesla's AI based version 12. The breakthrough has arrived. They figured out how to have an AI write code for a car to drive itself. And now it's all about scale. And that scale again comes from generating that video feed and buying enough chips for the AI to figure out how to write that code. It almost feels like Tesla doesn't really sell cars anymore. It seems like Tesla is selling robots that capture data of its surroundings. It then sends that data back to the mothership and AI brain processes that data and then it tells the car how to drive around its surroundings. It just so happens that that same car you can use to take from point A to point B with a steering wheel and pedal. If you'd like to support the channel, super easy. You can click subscribe. About 69% of you, 69% of you are not subscribed and that's completely okay, but I would greatly appreciate your support. And if you wanna go above and beyond, I have links to my merch and Athletic Greens in the description below, which is a supplement that I take every single day, free travel packs and vitamin D with your purchase. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was informative and helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.